Hello chess fans, this is international master Vitaly Neymar from PowerfulChess.com. Today I would like to show you one of my best games on how to beat a grandmaster in less than 20 moves. So I was playing white against a strong grandmaster Boris Kanzler in 2009. My first move was e4. Already on the first move Boris surprised me and he played pawn to g6 which is the modern defense. A surprise which I did not prepare for um, and, I was, and I was quite frankly surprised. Now here white has many options but the main one is to develop your d pawn to the center, playing pawn to d4. However, one of my principles and one of the things I tell to my students is if somebody plays an unknown opening against you, trying to look for possible ways to come up to a familiar ground. And therefore, I played knight to c3. The idea behind knight c3 is that if Boris will play now bishop to g7 I will play pawn to g3 he will play c5 and I will play bishop to g2 transforming into a well-known opening to me the close Sicilian. However, Boris surprised me again and he played pawn to c6. Now, if I would play g3, continuing with my plan, Boris would play d5 with a threat of pawn to d4, gaining more space. So I had to do something against it. So I played pawn to d4. Now I have to occupy the center and go into the main line of the modern defense. Boris played bishop to g7 and I finished the development of my knights with knight f3. And now he, Boris played d6 which is a slightly more defensive move. The more Ambitious move would probably be pawn to d5. So, Boris played d6, and now white has many options. The question is how to continue. Should I develop my white square bishop? Maybe e2, maybe d3, maybe c4, maybe even Fanchetto in through g3 and bishop to g2? Or maybe I should develop the dark square bishop. So the idea here for black is that if white develops his bishop to c4, black can start a very strong attack on the queen side with b5. Now if the if I develop the bishop to e2, eh, it seems slightly passive. So in the game I chose to use one of the most ambitious moves bishop to g5 which does two things number one it pins the spawn so black cannot play e5 and number two in case if black plays h6 I can always retreat with my bishop for example to e3 and the next move to play queen to d2 attacking the h6 weakness So after bishop g5, Boris surprised me again, playing queen to b6. Now the regular move would probably be just knight f6. But I guess Boris wanted to test me. Now the idea behind this move is to straightforward attack the b2 pawn, which is undefended. 
Now in case white plays rook to b1, black can play bishop g4, pinning this knight, and now white has some issues with the d4 pawn. Even if I go back bishop to e3, black can take on f3, and I have to take with the pawn. Because if I take with the queen, I lose the d4 pawn. So, in the game, uh, instead of defending the b2 pawn, I just continued my development. Queen to d2. And now the idea is just to long castle. So if back plays knight f6, I long castle and start my initiative attack on the king side. And I thought that I would probably get enough compensation in case uh, Boris grabs the b2 pawn. Which actually happened in the game. Boris did take on b2. I played rook to b1, queen to a3, and now again just bishop to c4. Simple chess, simple development. Knight f6, short castle. And now again Boris surprised me again. He played pawn to e5. A very dangerous attempt. Now, why did the boys play this move? Probably because if he would castle, I will play rook to b3, forcing his queen to retreat to a5. And then I have the e5 move. And after all the captures, the knight has to move and to allow me, my bishop, to take on e7. So Boris played e5, which is a dangerous attempt, because the king is still not castled. Well, again, as always, I tell my students, just play simple. So I just took on e5, pawn takes... And I took on e5 with the knight. Threatening f7 pawn. And now boys just castled. So what to do now? Now if I give time to, for black to develop his pieces such as maybe knight d7 or knight a6. Maybe the bishop can go somewhere. Then black should be fine. So I have to strike immediately. And this is what I did. Knight takes on f7. Rook takes f7. And now came a strong move e5. Making sure that the knight will not disturb me. Boris played knight to d5. In the hopes of me taking with the bishop. And getting rid of this annoying pin. But of course, I took with the knight. Pawn takes d5. Queen takes d5. And now this pin is getting stronger and stronger. So boys had to play queen to f8. So I was very happy in this position. And now, I continued my attack with e6. Threatening to take the rook. The only move the black had is rook to e7 blocking the pawn from advancing. Bishop takes e7 Queen takes e7 and now it looks like white is stuck because how do we continue the attack? Well if why just moves his rook to e1 or d1 which is a good idea to bring the queen maybe 
But then they can just develop knight c6 and might survive. So, so what we have to do here is to figure out how do we open this diagonal, the a2, g8 diagonal. And then it came up to me. Queen to d8. Check. And this is move number 18. After which Boris resigned. Because if the queen takes on d8, now comes the strong move e7. A discovered attack. Check. And after the king moves, there's going to be a mate. Now, if Boris would just hide, defend with the bishop, then I can just probably take on c8. And then, next move, rook takes on b7, and then position just crumbles. So after queen d8, Boris resigned. And this is how I beat a grandmaster in less than 18 moves. So what have we learned? Well, number one, when you're playing against somebody who is stronger than you, like a grandmaster, and it surprises you in the opening, take a deep breath in a few moments and look for ways to get into a familiar position. Number two, move according to the opening principles. Control the center, develop your pieces, and castle. And number three, follow the guidelines. Do not develop your queen in the opening, do not expose your king and be aware of poison pawns such as b2. Do that and you will beat any grandmaster within 20 moves. Good luck everyone and I will see you in my next videos which you can find on PowerfulChess.com.